Hi guys, welcome to another Chama Valley Maths tutorial. Mr Gordon here. We're looking at the second part of our functions playlist, composite functions. Now you may remember the word composite from composite shapes. That's where we join two shapes together. In a similar fashion, we're going to be looking at more than one function at a time. So we're going to have the red function here, the f of x is our first function, and that is 2x plus 3. Our second function, g of x, which I've put in a green box, is going to be x minus 4. Okay, so the first question says, work out gf of x when you've got gf of 2. So it's kind of saying that the x you've got to replace with the number 2. And from the first videos, you, you just remember that all you need to do is wherever you see an x in your function, you have to put the number 2. So which order do we do it in? We've got to go through both functions. We've got to go through the f and the g function. Now I'll put an arrow on to indicate the order that we do this. Because the f is the closest to the number 2, that's the function we're going to go through first, and then we're going to go through the g function. So let me set up a little diagram to show you what that will look like. So I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to have the number 2, and we're going to put it through the f function. Now the f function is red, so I'll put a red box there to indicate this function here, the f function. And that's going to be followed by us going through the green function, because the g is the function that is next on our list, okay? And you can have a list of whatever, you, I mean, you could have three functions. You could have a, like hg of f, but we've only got two this time, so two boxes for our two functions. I'll put some arrow, arrows on to indicate kind of like the direction that we're going to go through. Um, and then let's have a look at what it would look like. So remember, we've got to replace x with 2, that's what it says here, replace x with the number 2 when you're travelling through the red function. So that will look like this. You can see what I've done here. Instead of having 2x plus 3, I've got now I've replaced the x with a 2. I've got 2 times 2 plus 3. Now if we work that out, what's going to be the output once we've gone through the, the first function, the f1? So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 gives us 7. So the output is 7. Now we need to put that in because that's the number that is now going to have to go through the second function, the g one, the green one. So let's have a look at what that would look like. Now the second function was quite simple, it just said whatever the answer, whatever x is, you then take away 4. Now the output was 7, so our input for the second part is going to have to be 7. So now we do 7 take away 4 and that is going to equal 3. So the final output, once we've travelled through both functions, we started with 2, we put it into the red function, and then we put whatever the answer was to that into the green function, and th this is the result. Okay, we get 3. What I'd like you to do is to have a go at the second question, see if you can work out the answer, and I'll go through the solution in a, in a couple of seconds. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at that. Let me set out a similar diagram to try and explain to you if you didn't quite get the answer, what's going on. So it's similarly again, we're starting with the number 2, but this time the g is the closest to the 2. So the g is the first function we're going to go through. So let's put in a green box. Let me move this right over because I feel we might run out of room. So g is the first function we're going to go through, and f is the second one this time. So I'll put that down here. Now just let's borrow the arrow so we know that we're going this way through each one. And let's put 2 into the g function to see what we get out. So the first one would just be something like this. If I replace the x with a 2, the g function is quite simple. It's just x take away 4. So you've got 2 take away 4, which is going to end up being a negative. So we're going to get minus 2 coming out of that function. And then that's the, the, the value that we put into the second function. That's the value we're going to put into the f, f of x function. So that would look like this now. Remember, we're using this one up here. So it's 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, plus 3 is going to give us uh, minus 1 I'm getting out of there. So let's write that in. Minus 1 is going to be our, our output. So we can put that on the end. And that would be the answer. Hopefully you got that. Um, I hope that's been useful. The second part of this uh, video is going to be about when we're combining both functions together. So let's have a look at that. Okay guys, so in the second part of this video, we're going to be trying to combine functions together. So you'll probably see some notation that might say, work out g f of x like it does here, 
or work out fg of x like it does here. And what it means is you've got two functions. We've got the f function up here and the g function there. And we're going to combine them to make one function. All right, so one of the, one of the functions, either the f or the g, is going to be put into the other function. And the order is important. So we have to be able to read the notation to try and decide which order we're going to do it in. So what I've done is I've tried to put some extra brackets around the f of x section here to try and make it more obvious what's going to happen. Now you remember from our previous videos, when we had a number in the bracket, so if we had like g of 4, we would replace the x in the g function with the number 4. So we would replace this x here with a number 4. But we don't have a number this time. It's saying to us, put the whole of the f function wherever you see an x in the g function. So we've got to replace this x in the g function with the 2x plus 3, which is the f function. Now when I teach this, students often forget which order to do it in. So I normally try and come up with something that's a little bit weird to try and stick in your minds to help you remember in the test which order you've got to do it in. So I want you to think of a sandwich. Now when you make a sandwich, you've got the bread, it goes on the outside, and then you've got the filling, and the filling goes into the bread. All right, so in this example, the f function is going into the g function. So this is the f function is the filling, think of it like the jam, and the g function is like the bread. Okay, so what it will look like, I'll bring down the notation here. What we're really going to do is we're going to replace the x in the g function with the 2x plus 3. So when we do that, you can see that this used to be the g function, obviously, it used to be x minus 4 from up here, but we've put our filling, our f function, in place of the x and now we've got 2x plus 3 minus 4 and we've just got to once we've done the setup we just need to simplify that and that will give us the final function so let's remove the brackets because they're not being multiplied by anything so we can drop the brackets and now we can see what we need to simplify so we've just got 2x plus 3 minus 4 so if we simplify the numbers plus 3 minus 4 it's going to give us a minus 1 and that's the final function that is the g f of x function. Once you combine them, this is the final result. Now what I'd like you to do is have a go at the second example based on what I've just said. See if you can work it out and have a go. Pause the video and I'll go through the solution in a couple of seconds. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at that. Let's look at the solution. So in this one, the order's been reversed. So we've got, instead of having g of f, we've got f of g. So that means that the first letter is always the bread. I should have said that. The first letter is always the bread. The second one here is going to be our filling. So F is the bread for this example. So we'll swap these pictures over to give us an idea. So F is the bread and G is the filling. So G is going to go into F wherever we see an X. G is going to go into F wherever we see an X. Let's bring down some extra notation to make it more obvious. So wherever we see an um, an x in the f function, we're going to replace it with x minus 4. So we've only got one x in the f function. Let's replace it with x minus 4. And it should look something like this once you've done that. So we've got 2, well we had 2 times x plus 3. That's from up here. Now we've got 2 x minus 4 plus 3. We, now we do have to expand the brackets because they're being multiplied by 2. So when we expand the brackets, we end up with 2x and minus 8. It's 2 times x is 2x. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. And then we don't forget the plus 3 on the end. Simplify the numbers again. So minus 8 plus 3 is going to leave us with 2x minus 5. And that will be the final result. Okay. So hopefully you've, you've had a go at that example there. I'm going to put up some more practice ones now for you to have a go at. Okay. So here's some examples uh, for you to have a go at. So pause the video and have a go. If you've downloaded the, the worksheet that goes with this video, then these will all be on there for you. Um, and I'll go through, through the solutions in a couple of seconds. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at those. Let's have a look and uh, see what the answers were. So for the first one, remember the first letter is the bread, second one is the filling. So G was the bread and F was going into G. F, you had to put the F function into the G one wherever you saw an X. So you can see that when you replace the x in the g function with 4x plus 5, you would get this expression here. Again, you just drop the brackets and simplify the numbers. So you'd end up with uh, 5 and 3 makes 8. So the final answer would be 4x plus 8. 
The second one, you're doing the opposite way round. So you've got to, the F is the bread and the G is the filling this time. So G, this expression here, is going into the F function, wherever you see an X. So you get four lots of X plus three, um, and then the plus five from here is on the end. So expand the brackets to get four X plus 12, and then add the five on, and hopefully you've, you've got four uh, X plus 17 as the final answer. I hope that's been useful, giving you some understanding of uh, how composite functions work, and the next video will be on inverse functions. Uh -huh.